Hi, my name is Eddie Jackson Jr., and this is Real True Street Crime, and I want to kick some game with you all today. I was kicking it with my man Al Prophet, American Dope. That's how I got this shirt. I want to say a few things this morning. I want you all to hear me and think about what I'm saying. Stars. The network stars. I just want you all to know one thing. Stars spelled backward is rats. Y'all better know that. Try it for yourself. Stars spelled backward is rats. And let me say this to you all. Stars, watch me. And I'm finna prove it to all of America and all of y'all out there that stars watch us at American Dope and Real True Street Crime and specifically Real True Street Crime me is who they watch. And I'm finna prove it to all of America right here, right now. The story they tell you about Fat Steve and Lawrence at Winterhalter. The stars done already put it out there. They listened at everything I said about what happened at Winterhalter when Lawrence shot Fat Steve. Okay? Stars watched every word I said and sucked it up and thought the scene was a beautiful scene. And they put it on stars. Look at it for yourself. And they said when Lawrence shot Fat Steve, they was at Winterhalter. They was actually at Tyndall Rec Center. KK told me, Eddie, uh, we was at Tyndall Rec Center when that happened. But Star said, went a halter watching me just like that. So after that, they got to call KK up. Understand that because they watching me. The Winter Halter story. So let me go into it a little deeper. How Stars is watching me. Because I done seen three, four stories I done told right there on stars. And I want to clear up a few misconceptions. Because me and Al Prophet were sitting around talking. And Al Prophet got the whole BMF file from the beginning, the first day to the last day. Al Prophet has the whole file on BMF from the federal government. That's what I like to read. Because it's a lot of street rumors that ain't true. When you look at the real FBI files, that's what you're looking at. And when I looked at the real FBI files, the entire case, the most money I ever found that the government took for Big Meats was uh, $900,000. I didn't see nothing about this $50 million that somehow the government or whoever broadcasted out there to kill Big Meats and Southwest T. That's how they kill you, man. They over-exaggerate your case to the media. Look at white boy Rick. He tell you. They over-exaggerate his whole fucking case. And the government came back and told y'all that they over-exaggerated his goddamn case. So that's what the government do to set you up and take you down. They exaggerate your case. Now this $50 million they supposedly took from Big Meat. It ain't in the files nowhere. Nowhere. The most the government got in there that they ever took from Big Meat was $900,000. So let's clear up that myth of $50 million. Because as far as the government go, they didn't take but $900,000 from Big Meat and Southwest T. And taboos. You see how they mention taboos? Look on my channel. I mentioned taboos before BMF ever came on the air. Taboo in the Tangerine Room. See, what they didn't know on Stars was the Tangerine Room was just as big as Taboo's, and they freaked both of them like that. So anybody who was running the Taboo would go to Tangerine Room too. So I'm giving you the real facts from people who lived it and didn't just hear stories from the streets and exaggerate shit. Like white boy Rick Case. They exaggerated that boy Case. Even the Curry boys told y'all. They asked Johnny Curry, what was white boy on the scale of 1 to 10? But if you had asked the government, they'd have told you he was a 20. And they'd have known they was lying on that boy, man, to give him all that time. Understand how the government exaggerates your case to the media so the media be against you, man. When they come in that courtroom... Big Meech had $50 million. 
Not in his FBI file, he didn't have $50 million. Look at the government. And the government, if anybody out there know any goddamn thing, the government chased the motherfucking money. And all the government came up with was $900,000. Now, where the $50 million at? Obviously, Big Meats got that shit still stashed in the street for when he get out. Understand that. Because that $50 million rumor was just a rumor. And let me clear up something else. When they go to Marzette, Henry Marzette's daughter, they just inventing characters now. Stars is just inventing characters. Henry Marzette was dead long before that man Big Meats was ever born. And I don't believe Marzette had a daughter either. So all of us made up now. We just went to the fantasy track. When the truth of the story is, they got to connect from Lawrence. Lawrence got to connect from Maserati Rick. Maserati Rick got to connect from Thomas Hearns. So the connect that Big Meats was working came from Thomas Hearns. Because as I told y'all before, and I'm finna clear that up right now, they had two Colombian plugs. One that my father gave Demetrius and one that Maserati Rick got from running around with Thomas Hearns. But let me tell y'all this of the story. Both of the Colombian plugs wanted to deal with Demetrius because Maserati Rick was too flamboyant and they thought sooner or later he would catch a case and might roll on them. Now ask Al Prophet, two weeks before Maserati Rick got killed, the feds was all over him interrogating him. Two weeks before he got killed, the feds was doing their hardest to flip him. So I want to clear up a few inconsistencies out here about these stories. And if you take it to the FBI files, it used to be a show on TV called the FBI files. So take it to the FBI files and you might see some shit you don't want to see. Understand that when you take it to the FBI files, when you have a nigga like Ron Gear Valley stepping up, who's an actual FBI agent, and I want to remind all of y'all out there who watching me and might not been watching me that long, go over on Spotify. There's a series called Crime Town, and in that series it's called Kingpin's Kids, and that's Ron Gear Valley and myself telling the story about Eddie Jackson. So go over there on Spotify if you haven't done it already. For all my new customers and all my new clients and all my new audience, go over there on Spotify to a story or a series called Crime Town and I'm on Kingpin's Kids. That's over there on Stars, uh, I mean Spotify, I'm sorry. We ain't on Rats over there on Stars, which is Rats spelled backwards. Understand what Stars really is. Don't Puffy look like a big ass rat to you now? A star. Puffy looking just like a motherfucking rat. And I do want to say one thing. I've been a kid who been under the spotlight. The, 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 the newspaper followed me, writing about me as a kid, riding my mini bike. When I went to school, the kids was calling me a doper kid. And I don't even know what dope is. So I will say one thing, and I will say it clearly. I feel sorry for Puff Daddy kids. I'm a piggyback LL Cool J, and I'm going to leave it right there. I feel sorry for his kids, and that's the truth, because I know how they're going to be ridiculed. I know how when you go to school, everybody whispering and talking about you, and some niggas got enough nerve to come up in your face and say it. Your daddy is this. Your daddy is that. So I know what Puff Daddy Kids going to face. And I really feel sorry for y'all. But I will give Puff Daddy Kids one advice. And I really hope they hear this advice that I want to pass to them. Because I think it will help them a lot. Stay out of the media. Stay out of the media. That's the only advice I would give Puff Daddy Kids. Stay out of the media and let it play out. 
Understand that. So this is real true street crime. And I'm telling y'all all about how stars and all the rest will take your story, play them, and you'll never get 50 cent for them. That's why I'm writing a book and I'm putting a Street Corner Boy series together that I'm going to feature over there on Hulu. Who, 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 whatever you call it. Hulu or who, who, whatever you want to call it. Uh, 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 one of your networks out there that's featuring those kind of shows. And Detroit shows are getting real big these days. So I'm looking for a production company. And I got a few dollars, so I need a production company. And if anybody got a production company and they want to step up and work with me, and I got a few dollars to work with, and let's do this Street Corner Boys series and bring any one of these stories. And I got 1,500 stories out there right now. Let's bring any one of them that you enjoy to life on the screen in a 30-minute series, a reenactment. Of any stories here on Real True Street Crime, on Street Corner Boys. And as I say to y'all all, Cash App, Eddie Baby 22 and subscribe, share, and thank you too. And if you haven't, go over there on Spotify and check us out on Crime Town Kingpin's Kids. And I know about money, because all I ever seen was money. Understand that. And as I said to y'all the other day, the fat man used to handle so much goddamn money from the flow, it would be stacked from the flow to the ceiling. And that's a fact, Jack. And I'm just giving y'all the fact, Jack, from a real motherfucking FBI files. And all I seen in that FBI file, too, was six niggas from Detroit who play like they real ones, but they really snitched on that man. And I ain't gonna give them up. If you want to find out who they are, go and get the FBI files like we did. And then you'll know everything you want to know about Big Meech. Everything you want to know about him. Go get the FBI files in that case. Understand that. Because that jacket is all niggas in penitentiary want to see is your jacket. To make sure you ain't a snitch. And he wasn't a snitch. I can tell you that much from looking at his jacket. He wasn't that understand that. And all I want to say, the story seems like the rappers, by him dealing with them, he brought the rappers into the story and it made his story huge. And like I say, look at the FBI files from the day they started trailing Big Meech was the day after Nelly threw him that birthday party. The first day they ever got on Big, they didn't even know who Big Meech was until Nelly threw him a birthday party. And that's a fact. And look it up if you want to see when the feds first got on him. You want to see why Demetrius Flannery and them copped out. The feds was looking for them to come in there lawyered up on the day of the trial. And they came in there and said, we're going to cop out. We're going to take 30 years. And then this big misconception came on that it was $50 million dollars and all they ever took from Big Meats was $900,000. Look it up in the FBI files for yourself. Ask an FBI officer who was associated with the case. And ask an FBI officer, any of them, who've been associated with cases, who was the hardest motherfucker they know it was to catch? Who was easy to catch? Easy as pie. Put a phone surveillance on them niggas and the show is over. You ain't even got to follow them. Just tap their phone and they'll run their goddamn mouth about every fucking thing they doing over the phone. That's what my father say when you a lightweight. Him and Felix used to send each other telegrams. Felix, meet me in Chicago. And Felix would send Pops a telegram. Hey, they meet me out in L.A. And wherever that telegram came, they went because they listened to one another. They valued what they had to say to one another. So he knew if Felix told him to come out to L.A., it had to be something goddamn important. And he going to be there because that's his man, Felix Walls, and a whole lot of other brothers the fat man was running with. And I'm going to uncover them and bring them to you. But I just want to uncover this myth of this $50 million because I've been looking for it on stars when they was going to show where the government get the $50 million from. Stars still ain't showed. 
the government taking $50 million from Big Meets them. Stars ain't really showed the government taking anything from Big Meets them. The only thing stars to show, they copped out, laid down, and didn't even put up a fight. They copped out, laid down, and didn't even put up a fight. And now I'm starting to wonder. Now I'm starting to wonder seriously by me looking at that FBI file and the most money that they ever took from Big Meech was a $900,000. I'm wondering in my mind, did he have the money to fight, the fight that it was going to take to fight the fight? Because I'm going to go in the words of my man who was representing Muhammad Ali. When Muhammad Ali decided to fight the government, he took all the, give me a credit card, give me all you, this is what it's going to take to fight the government. It's going to take everything you got to fight the government, Muhammad. And this is Muhammad Ali. And he told Muhammad, give me your credit cards, give me everything you got, because fighting the government is going to break you. And look at it, fighting the government broke Muhammad Ali. And Joe Frazier gave him a fight to bring him back, because the government had broken him. Anybody fucking with the government, they're going to break you sooner or later. Know that. The greatest had to battle with them and come back as the greatest. But they broke Muhammad Ali too. So I be trying to clear up some misconceptions and tell y'all about stories. And I have to thank my man who gave me a uh, $10 cash app. I got to say thank you. I can't pronounce your name, brother, but it's spelled T-E-W-D-A-Y-S. T-E-W-D-A-Y-S. Thank you, my brother, and much love to you. And I got a new subscriber over there on Patreon. I got to thank, too. But my man here, T-W, T-E-W-D-A-Y-S. I got to thank him first. And Curtis Bailey over there on Patreon. Peace and love to both of y'all, man. T-E-W-D-A-Y-S. T-Days? T-Days? I don't want to mispronounce your name, brother. That's why I'm spelling it. And I got to say thank you to you. Anybody that look out and give me a dollar, I'm going to say thank you to you. So thank you to my man, T-E-W-D-A-Y-S. And definitely thank you to Curtis Bailey. Peace and love to both of y'all this morning. Y'all my newest subscriber, and I hope y'all watching. So thank y'all very much. And I'm just telling y'all about the misconceptions and trying to clear some of them up. Now, they'd have been better on stars to say the truth. He got to connect from Lawrence. Lawrence got to connect from Maserati Rick. Maserati Rick got to connect from Thomas Hearns. And just remember this, both of the Colombians one, Maserati Rick only knew one Colombian. Demetrius knew both. And Maserati Rick, Colombian, wanted Demetrius to deal with him because he was thinking about cutting Maserati Rick off. That's why he was so quick to sell the plug to, to Lawrence because the plug was finna cut him off because he was too flamboyant. The plugs knew the Fed was on him like 40 going north. And as I told y'all, the feds had interrogated that man toughly two weeks before he got killed, trying to flip him. So here's the facts of the stories, and check it out for yourself. Go to that FBI file and look at it, and then tell me what you think. Because what I saw, I saw. I saw six niggas who ratted on that man. Straight up rats, and they ran around in the streets now like they big fellas. Wow. I'm going to leave it there. But all that shine ain't gold. Just remember that. Peace out, Cash Eddie Baby 22. Subscribe, share, and thank you too. And if you haven't, please go over there on Spotify and look at Crime Town Kingpin's Kids. I'm out. Peace and love.